Hello, dear friends. This is your host, Heman Gangwar. And today we are going to discuss and explore understanding regarding Docker. At the end of this video, we would aim to clear the doubts and the concepts related. So starting with, what exactly you feel Docker is? So you can search the internet and uh, following definition you can see on the web. So in easy language, we can consider it any piece of software which allows you to create isolated virtual environments, which we named as containers, where you can run your applications without need of any extra platform. Still confused. So let's try to put things in another way that exactly what factors led to its existence. So one of the important factor which we can speak at this time is everyone want technology to be optimized. So optimization is a must thing. So let's traverse back in history to find and understand it better. Not too far, but in initial stages of technology where there were dedicated hardwares were required to run any specific operating systems. You cannot run like today. There were compatibility issues the example of that time, uh, for example, you can take Windows operating system that was mainly running on Intel based architecture. Here, you need to develop the operating system which will be compatible as per your hardware. The examples can be um, Spark based Solaris systems. Here, you have a hardware layer over which operating system is embedded and you need to run the applications and user can interact directly. Other examples are IBM AIX, HP UX, and the Sun Solaris thing. So they faced means few issues. For example, your hardware was very bulky and costly to deploy and manage. Even sometimes you need a very big space, like for example, rooms to store only single server at that time. Also, there were constraints that always were developed in compatibility with hardware. That was also a painful thing. So a so few years later after that, there were advent of the open source technologies. The operating system were more of platform independent and that broke the hardware stereotype. You can run any of your machines on any of the OS. Several licensed and even open source providers jump into the race. The windows developed their image and compatibility to any of the hardware. Basically, uh, Linux thing or Unix thing expose their source code so that one can simply fetch it and develop their own operating system. There are some examples which I'm displaying on the board for you, which have open code. So though it solved the only hardware and the licensing cost thing, still it posed few challenges that still we need hardware to run our operating system. You need 100 licenses to run 100 systems and the management cost. Then there came a boost to the IT technology with the rise of the virtualization thing. It actually changed the game for the hardware vendors and the things. Now you don't need the same amount of hardware for your regular need operating system. Instead, you can virtualize your hardware. Simply uses very few hardware where a special software called hypervisor will run, which can run independently or over operating system layer. It helps to deploy several virtual machines where hardware is virtualized and presented to each virtual machine. You can see the one hardware layer is there, then a hypervisor layer is there. It can be ESXi or someone else, which creates a virtual machine and present the hardware to them, or share the hardware to them. Each virtual machine will consider it has its own dedicated set of hardware, but that will be on the shareable basis. Then on top of that, operating system will be installed and then you can run your specific applications. There were numerous providers for that, but the key players basically that contributed means was ESXi provided by VMware, Hyper-V provided by Windows, and the KVM by the Linux or Red Hat basically. Then virtualization techniques solved several questions, but still there were several unanswered. VM will take a good amount of time to deploy if corrupted or if you have to perform a new installation. Each operating system installed, for example, Windows, Red Hat, Palo Alto, incur its own license cost 
whatever optimization is still required is running vm to hold same resources even if not running any apps you can buy a bus but you cannot go everywhere with a bus for near things you have to take a bicycle maybe it's a lame example then came our containerization era it acted as a game changer and it basically enlightened the technical bulbs and the pioneer of in that was docker it actually changed the game in the way the traditional operating system was handled it used micro kernel based approach virtual where you are not virtualizing the os in the sorry virtualizing the hardware but instead you are virtualizing the operating system to spin the minimal libraries or binaries in an isolated environment which we call as container to run the applications they are very lightweight in nature and doesn't consist of even doesn't need any complete operating system they can run on shared basis now i hope that makes sense to you so as we know what got docker so let's discuss some benefit offered by it why should be we should opt for it so firstly it provided me exactly a huge cost benefit as it doesn't need a complete operating system for each container for each application then the deployments are really fast within minutes they also provide a good degree of isolation as containers are isolated so to do not conflict in other name spaces then for the good amount of security is there as your containers are isolated so no one can access it like that then it added a optimization to underlying os uh, os that is required very less resources to spin container you won't need a new operating system compatibility issues were solved there is no nothing like running on my machine concept make it port it portable it and then can be shipped and run anywhere lastly it's platform agnostic you can run on anything on server windows machine desktop laptop virtual machine cloud anywhere you want do you feel so finally let's discuss a bit about its flow how it works so for that we have a dedicated storage space which you can call um, basically a registry it's a docker hub registry or you can use a private registry images are there you can pull the required image in or even if you can uh, just pull a image and create a docker file uh, for it to add your custom ports commands services you can also build your uh, custom image so once your image is ready you can uh, run that custom image to spin the containers or even with the default image you can run the containers and once your container is done or you feel it's good just make a image out of it and push it to the registry so that's all i have from my part hopefully you liked it so now you have to do your part i mean like it simply like it share with your friends contacts press the bell icon subscribe on youtube facebook spread out the word share with your friends whosoever is in need whosoever understand this topic and they actually want to learn it and that's all from my end thank you very much